Let's now turn to uh, the third party assessor <coughs> with Silvera. So Sam, Sam Gill is co-founder uh, and CEO of uh, Silvera. We've heard from Annette Nazareth how uh, the principles are important uh, to set the basis for uh, proper qualification of um, projects from a carbon credit emission standpoint. So Sam, with Silvera, what's the role of a third party, how would you feature your role in the value chain? Thank you so much. So yeah, just to introduce Silvera and maybe we move on to the next slide. Silvera is a company that's providing data to the whole uh, private sector, but also the public sector to try and power the transition. So, so giving data that's actually showing the impacts and the climate impacts of various uh, investments that are made by the public sector or the private sector. And so when we're working in the uh, carbon markets, what we're trying to do is empower participants with data to show the real climate impact of any projects that they're investing in. And what we produce is essentially a, a ratings product showing the relative quality of each carbon offset uh, project, so the individual project that a, a corporate or a public sector participant might be investing in. And so the difference there when you compare our work with the ICVCM is as Annette says, that essentially the ICVCM is trying to produce listing standards, so almost a quality floor. And uh, the ICVCM is applying those CCPs at the program, the crediting program, and uh, the methodology level. Whereas what we do is we actually assess at the project level using very similar um, uh, pillars of assessment. So for example, our ratings actually assess the, 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 the CCPs that relate to climate integrity, but we're doing that at a project level. And so the three key pillars of quality that we look at are uh, the carbon performance of the project. So assessing the carbon accounting that the project produces itself. So is it, if it was, for example, a direct air capture project, we'd be looking at the life cycle analysis of the project, looking at the displacement effects of the power consumption, or if, for example, we were looking at forestry protection project, we'd be assessing using our own machine learning and satellite data, we'd be assessing uh, whether the, the reporting that the project's produced is accurate. So looking at have, ha, has the project actually protected the amount of trees that it's claimed, uh, how much carbon is stored in those trees, how much carbon is stored in the soil around it. And so we're essentially using an independent technical, technological stack to assess the claims of the project. The second thing we do is we look at the additionality of the project, so looking at the counterfactual the project's based on, and again, assessing at the project level whether the methodology has been assessed and applied in an appropriate way or whether there's been an overcrediting risk that's been introduced. And then the third thing we look at is the durability of these projects. So essentially what we're doing, again, is using a methodology, a technology stack to assess independently the claims of the project at the project level so that we can give... Um, with a high degree of accuracy and assessment of the, the quality of each individual project. Um, so it's a very complementary approach to the, the methodology level assessments that are being applied by the ICBCM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great. And, and, and definitely you're bridging uh, corporate demand to the, the project uh, uh, at the project level. So uh, we, we've heard um, efforts on the uh, ICBCM uh, front. What would you see as the key uh, factors for uh, boosting the, the voluntary carbon market moving forward, given your position in the, in the value chain, Sam? That's a really interesting question. In many, many ways, that's the million dollar question. I think, you know, I spend a lot of time uh, with C-suite executives in the private sector, but also policymakers uh, around the globe who are kind of wrestling with this. And I think, um, you know, Annette, really helpfully split the, the the problem into the two sides you've got the supply side uh quality problem and then you've got the demand side integrity problem on the supply side i think we're very close to getting to an answer the data uh the data sort of approaches that are being applied by folks like ourselves silvera and others are, are allowing us to get to with quite a high degree of accuracy and granularity and assessment of the quality of any individual project. And we're also uh, increasingly strengthening the methodologies uh, that they use to produce these credits. But I think what the world needs to agree on is what is the paradigm that we're working to. We're not going to be able to get to absolute 100% certainty on the accounting around any of these projects, frankly. 
Um, and we also need to come to a clear paradigm around the permanence or durability requirements that we're going to ask the market to um, meet. So, for example, if we were all to agree that if, um, you know, a carbon credit needs to be stored, uh, storing uh, carbon for 100 years, for example, to, um, to be acceptable, that would allow the market to start engineering, for example, horizontal or mm vertical stacking approaches to allow different types of carbon to be used in, in, in portfolios. And it would allow us to start regularizing and standardizing the market. But at the moment, there's no clear consensus there on what the, what the actual quality paradigm we're working towards is. So I think there needs to be a clear, um, accepted uh, consensus around uh, the quality paradigm we're working towards. And then on the flip side, uh, Annette referred to the work of the VCMI, which is the um, demand side integrity body. But again, what is needed is a much wider consensus around what are we asking corporates to do in terms of compensation? So where they're not able to reduce their emissions to absolute zero, what are we asking them to do? What do they get to claim if they compensate uh, their emissions with, with carbon credits? Um, and um, what, what, will they, what benefit will they actually receive for that? Are they going to get tax breaks? Are they going to get preferential treatment in the in the capital markets? Mm -hmm. um, are they going to be uh, rewarded in some way? Because the private sector can't act as a charity. So I think that those consensuses on uh, the supply side integrity and the demand side integrity paradigms are completely necessary to allow the market to now move forward and scale. Clearly, uh, a, a typical market dynamic between supply and demand. So th thank you. For, uh, that's uh, that's insightful, Sam. Thank you.